schedule for game three of this four game series. Dusty Baker starting lineup for San Francisco. Marvin Bernard in right field leading off. Ellisburg center fielder bat second. Barry Bonds left fielder hitting third. Jeff Kenneth second base will bat fourth. J.T. Snow first baseman hitting fifth. Charlie Hayes the third baseman bat sixth. Brent Main catching hitting seventh. Ray Sanchez at shortstop bats eighth. Kirk Reeder the pitcher hitting ninth. Defensively for the Phils, Scott Rowland at third, Alex Arias playing short, Mark Lewis at second, Kevin Jordan at first, Mark Perrin catching, Greg Jeffries in left, Doug Glanville in center, and Ruben Amaro will be in right. On the mound is Mike Welch. And the rookie is still looking for his first major league win. He's 0-0 with a 3.12 earned run average. All of his appearances, five of them, have been out of the pen. Marvin Bernard pops it up, foul and playable. Mark Parrott fighting the sun. He's right there. Makes the catch. So Bernard is out on one pitch. That's a good sign. One down here in the first. The opponent's hitting 233 off of Welch. Lefty's at 250. Righty's at 222. And he's had good command. He's thrown strikes. He's only walked one batter in those five appearances in eight and two-third innings and has struck out seven. Ellis Burks hitting a 285, one for five since joining the Giants. Welch did have three starts for the Strand Wilkesbury Red Barons this year. Foul backing out of play by Burks. He was 1 0 as a starter at Strand Wilkesbury with a 265 ERA in those three starts. Pitched most of his games out of the bullpen with the injury and Tyler Green and Green being placed on the disabled list. Welsh coming in as kind of an emergency starter. They hope to get five, six innings out of him. Billy well, Scott him from the New York Mets this winter. Four catcher Hector Mercado. Umpires for today's game. Jeff Nelson behind the plate. Eric Gregg at first. Mark Hirschbeck at second. Hunter Wendelstad at third. Two balls and a strike to Ellis Burks. Bounce to deep shortstop. Alex Arias. Low throw. Dug out nicely by Kevin Jordan for out number two. That's pretty steady play by both of them. Ball too far to the left to roll in, and Arias has to go back in the hole to plant. So it makes a pretty good throw, and pretty easy play for Kevin Jordan. He does have to scoop it out of the dirt, but it was a short hop and wasn't real tough. Does he relish for getting the day off? With our Rico Pronia and Bobby Abreu. Barry Bonds hitting at 270 takes a strike, nothing in one to Bond. Birthday wishes today to the great Jack McKee from Wildwood. Celebrating right here at the ballpark is 72nd. Wishes from wife Isabel, from his children, and from us. Bond gets a lot of walks, 92 of them, second only to Mark McGuire. McGuire has walked 112 times. Three balls and a strike to Barry Bonds. One thing I like about Mike Welch, he first came up. He's never been in the big leagues prior to this year, but he first came up, and he said he was nervous his first time out, the first hitter, but then he was fine, and and he doesn't get intimidated. Even with the Barry Bonds up there, he's, he's not intimidated. He's the type of guy that's going to come after you. Bonds lost a fly ball into shallow left. Long run, rolling, can't hang on. It goes all the way to the corner. Bonds will end up at third base. Jeffries was playing him way around to the opposite there, rather to pull. He was playing him way over in left center field, so Rowan did get to the ball, but couldn't make the over-the-shoulder catch, and I guess that'll have to be scored a triple, and it is. Funny thing is, had Bonds busted all the way, the way that ball ended up, off Roland's glove and all the way to the corner, he could have had him inside the park home run. With Barry Bonds' speed, there's no question about it. If he runs hard, he scores, I think, easily. I think he can go around the bases. He, he's not there. He's not even running hard there. It doesn't appear. I mean, it's almost like he's 
not loose or something. But if he goes hard, if he busts it out of the box, I, I got to believe with his speed, he scores. Yeah. He scores on that easily. Here's Jeff County hitting at 272. One strike to Kent. But they wishes to Harry Krause from Leah in our phone center and also from us on this August 2nd. Welch was the third round draft pick of the New York Mets in the June 93 draft that he's got in this winter. Welch comes out of Nashua, New Hampshire. Last time he was a full-time starter was in 94 in the Mets farm system. He's then he's been mostly out of the bullpen and the spot starter. Mostly a closer in the double-A AA and triple-A with the Mets. I've seen him in the last couple of years. In fact, last year, pitching for Norfolk, he was pitching against us, and I was telling Bobby SLA who was going up the plate, I said, this guy throws a lot of fastballs. Everything's hard. Everything's away. Hey. He goes up the first pitch with a fastball at his lip. <laughs> That's the outing report. As he says, thanks a lot. Yeah, no, he had a few words for me. <laughs> but he will pitch inside. He's not afraid to do that either. He balls in two strikes to Jeff Kent. Basically a fastball pitcher. He was fastball slider as a closer. That's about all he threw. He had a curveball from before a few years ago when he was starting, and he got up to Scranton this year. And Gary Ruby worked with him quite a bit. Got his curveball back, and is using that probably more than his slider now. A foul ball. Still two and two to Jeff. Betty Errett, St. Mary's Catholic home in Cherry Hill, celebrating a 95th birthday, which is from Sun Jay and from us. Full count to Jeff Kent. On deck is J.T. Snow, the switch hitter. Much better left-hand hitter than right-hand hitter. Giants right behind the Phillies and team batting in the National League. Their ERA is, is a staff seven, four point. Four more homers than the Phillies. Back through the middle, base hit center field. Bonds will score, and the Giants take a one nothing lead here in the first inning. Camp drives in his 66. Well, to put his glove down there, the ball was hit pretty hard. It's 3-2 count. He's just sitting on a fastball. Makes his pitch. Gets it up a little bit. He kind of half get out of the way and half put the glove down and hope it goes in there as Bonds comes in to score. We'll bring up J.T. Snow. He's hitting a 2.52. A big hit last night. Team. A base is loaded double. Having a lot better left-handed than right. 276 left-handed. That's 153 right-handed. That is 12 homers. 11 have been hit from the left side. One ball and no strikes to J.T. Snow. Beats a foul. One and one. Birthday wishes to Bob McGovern. And it's August 2nd from his wife Linda and from us. Yeah. 
Evolving the strike. JT's been swinging about good the last nine games, hitting almost 400. Nine RBIs in those nine games. Pops this one foul out of play, a ball in two strikes. Kind of first base. Two outs and a run across here in the first inning. The ball's in two strikes to J.T. Snow. Kevin Jordan's going to play behind Jeff Kent at first base now. Three and two, two outs. Kent will be running. Top of those better angle than I do. Well, I'll try it again at three and two. Giants are three and a half back in the wild card race behind the Cubs. Phillies are six and a half back now. Kevin Jordan's got to stay there. Can't get let can't get too big of a jump. Last pitch as soon as Kevin Jordan backed, backed off, Kent was on his way. Doesn't matter, it's ball four, and the Giants with two men on base, two outs for Charlie Hayes. There you see the wild card picture. Right on the heels of the Giants, the Mets, then the Dodgers, and the Bills. Terry Francona and Dusty Baker. Charlie Hayes will be the batter. Hayes hitting at 310. Birthday wishes to Jim Donnelly today from Gibbstown, New Jersey. Jim celebrating his 65th. Charlie Hayes, good slider. Charlie hitting 291 with runners in scoring position. One on. Chris Howell of West Deptford, New Jersey, 90 years of age today. in his first start is having to throw a lot of pitches here in this first inning. Should be out of the inning on the fly ball shallow center. Doug Glanville will put it away. Giants get a run on two hits. No errors. They leave two after one half. San Francisco one. Phillies coming to bat. On the top of the first. Phillies batting bottom half of the first. Terry Francona's lineup will be a right-hand hitting lineup. Doug Glanville in center field leading off. Greg Jeffries left field bat second. Scott Rowland third base hitting third. Kevin Jordan at first base bats fourth. Mark Lewis second base hitting fifth. Ruben Amaro in right field bat sixth. Mark Perrin catching hitting seventh. Alex Arias at shortstop at safe and Mike Welch the pitcher hitting ninth. Giants line up defensively with Charlie Hayes at third, Ray Sanchez at shortstop, Jeff Kent at second, J.T. Snow at first, Brent Main is the catcher. In the outfield, Barry Bonds in left, Ellis Burks in center, and Marvin Bernard in right. Kirk Reeder on the mound for the Giants. Raiders making his 23rd start of the season tonight. He leads the Giants with 11 wins. His record 11 and 6 with a 4.5. 2-1 earned run average. Opponents are hitting 272 off of him. 
This guy's going to kind of keep you off balance. He's not a hard thrower, off speed stuff. He's really, he struggled after the break. His first three starts after the All Star break, he was 0 3, had a high ERA. But his last time out, pitched an excellent game against his old teammate, the Montreal Expos. Got a complete game in a 6 to 1 win by the Giants. So he's kind of seemed to got a little on track that last outing. 18th round draft pick of the Expos in the 91 draft. He came to the Giants in July of 96 along with Tim Scott. And who did the Expos get in that trade? For Tim Scott. Kirk Reeder and Tim Scott went from Montreal to San Francisco for? That is correct. Good buddy of yours. And mine. He's in the Phillies bullpen even as we speak. That would be that Mark Leiter. That's exactly right. Mark Leiter going to the Expos from San Francisco in that deal. One on the count to Glanville, who's hitting a 314. Well hit to left field. But Bonds is there right in front of the fence. One down. Glanville gave it a good ride, but caught by Bonds, one away. Now he's going to try and come inside here on Glanville. And that boy, I tell you what, he just is so quick in there. He just throws those hands through the zone so fast. Gets some good bat speed. Only thing kept him from going out, he just didn't get it high enough. There's Greg Jeffries hitting a 299. Greg's been a good career hitter against Kirk Reeder. 400 lifetime with a couple of homers. One on the count to Jeffries. Ball miss two and one. Fly ball in the shallow right. Bernard is there. And that's two down here in the first. It'll bring up Scott Rowland. Well, these are fourth in the league and batting average at 272. And hit a lot of home runs here and run markers. Too high at 465, although the Phillies pitching staff does strike out here. He's their third in the league in strikeouts. Scott Rowland batting at 295 here at the bat, hitting 333. 14 of his 21 home runs have been hit here at Veterans Stadium. Eddie Martin of Quarryville, Pennsylvania, 76th birthday today. Wishes from son Sam, grandchildren Nate and Heather, and from us. One and two to Scott Rowland. Hits there is none left after one, one nothing. Giants. Fun by dads and kids running the bases. Is that Mark Leiter? He runs a little better than his dad, I think. <laughs> Mark also made a great defensive play. And there's Rico Bronia and his daughter Alexa Grace. Back and on the play off the bat of Brent Main, who's hitting at 286. Also here in section 354, make a wish families with 63 youngsters are here. Courtesy of Arlene Dowd and the Phillies, Marianne Delonzo from the Phillies Community Relations Department, making all this possible for the make a wish. Foundation for the families and 63 kids. Great to see them at the ballpark today. On to the count to Brent Main. Giants lead at one nothing. We are in the second inning. Verna Walker in Allentown, Pennsylvania, celebrating a 90th birthday. 
wishes from her friends in New Tripoli and also from us. Water, two balls and two strikes. Now look at this. I'm I'm not sure if he. I know he pulled the hit, or he might have pulled somebody else back there. Got him with a breaking ball, struck him out. First strike out for Welch. One down here in the second. Pretty good curve ball he's thrown. This copyright telecast is presented by authority. The Phillies may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Phillies. Here's Ray Sanchez playing at shortstop today, hitting 285. On the bench today for Dusty Baker, two guys who have worn the Phillies out in this series. Rich Aurelia, a lifetime 361 hitter against the Phils. Phil Miller, a lifetime 424 hitter against the Phils. That's kind of surprising to see those two guys getting the day off of Dusty Ellie. You know, Moves the guys around. A lot of managers, a day game after a night game, they'll give them a little breather, but for those two guys, it's surprising. It's pause for station identification on the Phillies television network. You're watching Phillies baseball on WPHL-TV Philadelphia. He balls in a strike to Ray Sanchez with one out of no base runners. hit down the left field line and this ball is off the top of the fence. Sanchez will get two on it. He missed the homer by a couple of feet. Third hit surrendered by Welch. That ball looked like it was going out. He got a fat ball up and in. Most guys that are not big. Ray Sanchez is not a big guy. They will hit the ball inside. If they're going to hit it out, they will hit that ball inside. Most guys are quick in there. The thing about guys throw them in there is because a lot of times those guys will slap the ball the other way, but showed some pretty good bat speed inside there. It wasn't a bad pitch. Here's pitcher Kirk Reeder who has been swinging the bat well this year. He's hitting 225 with a double of one run batted in. In his career, he's not been that good a hitter. Lifetime a 131 hitter, but he's been swinging the bat well this year. One strike to Reeder. Giants leading one nothing. We are playing in the second. Two quick strikes to pitcher Kirk Reeder. Jim McGookin of Harrisburg celebrating his 71st birthday today. Sanchez at second with one down. Just wide. One and two. Birthday wishes to Matt Bohinski of Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, celebrating his 80th. Matt and his wife Rose also recently celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. Peters fighting off pitches. It's still a ball and two strikes.
finally got him, put him away for the second strikeout for Mike Welch. Two down here in the second. Good curveball here by Welch. Reader fought off some pretty good pitches. This is a good curveball right there. That's a snapdragon. Brings up Marvin Bernard. He fouled out to catcher Mark Perrin his first time up. But he has had some series here. Six for 11 now in the series. Babe Bernard. Man, he is. I tell you, I think he hits as hard as on the barrel. And they made some good pitches to him. Fastball's up and in. Inside out, hits it hard to left. One ball and no strikes to Bernard. Sanchez at second base, and he is really getting a tremendous lead. And he hit the outfield, and he'll score easily. I think part of it is it's the uncertainty of where Bernard's going to hit the ball. The infielders have a responsibility along with the pitcher to keep him close. I think everybody's you know, looks like Alex Arias playing him straight up at short. Mark Lewis pretty much straight up at second. All, both of them playing very deep. The big thing you want to do here on a ground ball is just knock it down. He rolls it a strike to Marvin Bernard. Three and one to him. John McKenzie of Darby, Pennsylvania, 73 years of age. Ellis Burks waiting on deck. Given up by Welch, two men on base, two outs for Burks, who grounded his short his first time up. Welch here in the second inning has already thrown 50 pitches. That is not what they're looking for with him starting, because he's uh, not used to being out there for that long. Burks, he grounded the short his first time up. One strike to Ellis Burks. Wow. Look at that average with two outs and runners in scoring position. That's some clutch hitting right there. 422. Don't tell Welch that. <laughs> They don't have a whole lot of choice here with Barry Bonds on deck. I don't think you'd intentionally walk him in this situation. No. <laughs> one ball and one strike to Ellis Burks. Here's Barry Bonds. Great Phillies fan, Loretta Stigler of Wilmington, Delaware, celebrating his 75th birthday today. He's ahead of Burks, one ball and two strikes. Pitch count that Welch has so far. The Phillies, I think, at this stage would be happy to see him get through five innings. I think they'd be very happy to see that. Check swing foul. I think they were probably open for five or six at the start. Over 50 pitches here in the second inning. That unless you know he has a couple quick innings. He might not make it to the fifth.
On to the 400 level, the press level is 17th home run of the year, and San Francisco now leads it four to nothing. That was a no doubt about it. Yep. And that's the one thing that has been haunting this pitching staff, this whole homestand. Been a big inning. It's like a changeup that doesn't stay down and away where Mark Parent was, where it started off and started off a little high and came back over the plate. I'm sure Mike Welch would like to have that one back. Barry Bonds looped a triple to right field his first time up. I don't want the count to Bonds. So Birds, who since joining the Giants had just an infield single, has made an impact for his new club with a three-run home run. This homestand, L.A., it seemed like the Titans are always trying to come back from deficits here and it's been early deficits most of the time that's well struck the left center field and that ball is out of here opposite field home run Perry Bonds his 21st and his 25th here at Veterans Stadium second most all time by a visiting player Gary Carter hit 26 Bonds has got a heck of a shot of the cycle here. He's tripled and homered in his first two at bats. We're only in the second inning. Well, depending on how things go, if Dusty keeps him in there for nine, we got to believe he's got a good chance. Well, normally is the long man on the Phillies bullpen getting a start because of Tyler Green's being disabled. But who would be the long man today? Well, that's what I'm trying to think. Spradlin pitched last night. Metallico pitched a couple innings. Yorkies Perez, maybe? Yorkies, I would assume. Kenny Ryan pitched an inning. I'm sure they don't want to use him for three or four innings. And I'll the other hand, up. you got Yorkies as your only left-hander in the bullpen. Yeah. Here's Jeff County single to drive in a run his first time up. One and nothing. Joan Goldschmidt of Fox Chase, Northeast Philadelphia, celebrating a 64th birthday today. That's well hit. That's got a chance. That is out of here. Back to back to back home runs. Burks, Bonds, and Kent. Kent's 15th, and the Giants now lead it by a score of six to nothing. Wow. So Welch in his first major league start. They're taking it to him here and lead six nothing. Uh, fastball up a little bit, middle of the plate. That's what's going to happen when you get behind. You have to come into the strike zone, and the hitter knows it. They sit on one pitch, and they get it. In the old days, J.T. Snow would go down, but it doesn't happen anymore. Two straight strikes. I think J.P. probably thought maybe he'd get loosened up a little bit. But I think Jeff Kent would have gone down in the olden days, or maybe Barry Bonds after one home run. Those guys, that, they just they take a big swing, they'd knock you down. Still nothing in two to J.T. Snow, who walked his first time up. To back to back homers here in the second. Giants have a six to nothing lead. 
One ball and two strikes to J.T. Snow. He offered at the low breaking ball, struck him out. So ironically, Welch strikes out the side. But San Francisco puts five on the board. Four hits, including back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back homers. No errors and none left. Six-nothing Giants. Marcus Perez will come on here in the fourth inning. Face Barry Bonds with two on and nobody out. Perez, the loser in the game the other night. That was the first game of the series. That was the Thursday night ball game, or the uh, Friday night game. There are the numbers on him coming into game number 31. 15 walks, 28 strikeouts in 32 and two-third innings. So he's going to try and stop the bleeding here. It's already six to nothing. Oh, Galen comes up to Mike Welch here after he's in the dugout. There's, you know, pat him on the back. There's nothing you can do. I mean, he's you, you, you probably as good off as say, better, just as well off saying, hey, you know, that's happened to everybody. I said that to Carlton Lower once uh, two years ago. I said, hey, in a similar situation. I said, that happens to everybody. I said, well, I mean, it never happened to me, but I've seen it happen to a lot of guys. Never happened and to you. Had right? him now. Yeah, there's a base hit. Amaro's playing really deep, so Bernard's going to score. Over to third goes Burks. Barry Bonds knocks in a run. He's three for three. He's looking at a cycle. He has a single, a triple, and a homer. Three for three. It's only the fourth inning. All he needs is a double. Well, Yorkie throws him a fastball. It's pretty much down the middle. Barry Bonds is not going to miss that pitch. But Ruben Amaro is playing very deep with Bonds. I mean, understandable, but... I mean, if he gets the ball in the air, it's going to go out hitting that hard. That'll bring up Kent. He's two for two. He's homered and singled, knocked in a couple. Seven to nothing. And we're only in the fourth. That run charged to Welch. And one more his responsibility, that being Ellis Burks at third. Strike to Kent. First two games have been corkers, and the Phillies gotten behind in those and managed to come back and almost win them. But you can only do that so many times. No, for the offense, it's like sticking a pin in a balloon. You know, after after a number of times, and they they have battled back and battled back and battled back, and you no, know, it's it's more than anything. It's just it's a, a bunk, I guess, that the pitching staff is going through. But to the offense's credit, they keep battling back. Ken, a ground ball to Roland. He'll go to second for one. Lewis will have no relay. Another run will score. It's eight to nothing. And give Ken his third RBI of the game on a fielder's choice. Two outs and Ken on at first base. On the line now complete on Mike Welch. Eight to nothing as J.T. Snow will bat right-handed. He has walked and struck out. Snow, 276 left-handed, 153 from the right side. Giants with one in the first, five in the second, two here in the fourth. The Phillies have gone up and down in order all three innings. Perez's pitch is over for a strike. Well, back and our producer tells us the last time a Phillies pitcher gave up back to back to backers was Don Carmen in 89. I remember Nate Colbert, Dave Winfield, and Willie McCovey going back to back to back in San Diego back in the days when you had to hit them in the seats there. Ooh. Fouled out of play. Yeah, they made some awful sounds. But those were three guys who could launch them. Oh, boy. They hit him a long way. But evidently Carmen did it against the uh, New York Mets. I don't know who hit them. One ball, two strikes. Looped into center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Kent will stop at second. J.T. Snow has a hit. His first in the ball game. And the Giants with runners at first and second. Two outs for Charlie Hayes. 0 for 2.
Mike Welch who's see the totals on him 87 pitches that's probably the biggest reason that Terry Francona got him out of there and, uh, he's probably in a little bit of a state of shock right now but you know what tomorrow's a new day and like I said you learn from it you figure out what you did what you didn't do what you should have done what you could have done I mean you'll play it over in your mind he will you know for the next three or four days going man I can't believe that but you, you take it, you take a lesson, try and learn a lesson from everything you do. One ball and one strike. He had made some relief of pitch, uh, appearances prior to that, five of them for the Phillies, and that was his first major league start. to Charlie Hayes. Well, the toughest thing about a situation like that for a young pitcher like Mike Welch is you know, what's going through your mind is like is wait, these guys probably think I can't get anybody out now. I mean you really you, you really have to fight to not question yourself. Hayes fouls it back. Oh yeah exactly and, and then to get caught with what happened to him when they hit those three long homers off him. I mean that makes it even tougher. Well, his next turn would be Friday, right? I mean, yeah. He'd be looking at the big unit. And he's a left-handed hitter. How's that big unit doing today? Ball bounces away from Parrott, and the runners will move up on a wild pitch. Houston leading Pittsburgh one to nothing. That gave him the fifth inning. Randy Johnson's first start in the National League. Well, it's the pitch here that Mark Parent can't. He goes down and tries to get in front of and just takes a hop to the side of him. Looks like that hard splitter that he throws. Three and two to Hayes, and he fouls that one off Parent. He's taken a few of them the last couple times out. This one, oh, that looks like off the shoulder there. Boy, that hurts, too. I hit him in the head with a clubhouse door coming out this morning. He acted like he was really hurt. I said, how could you be hurt after what you've been taking back there behind the plate? <laughs> hit him right in the forehead. Struck him out. That looked like a pork ball. Two away. It was. This is a good one here. This ball just kind of dived there right at the end. Plus, it's off speed. You get the hitter off balance out in front. So Charlie Hayes out on strikes, and that'll bring up the catcher, Brett Maine. Brent Maine, he has struck out and doubled. Right Runners at second and third and two outs, two more runs in the inning. Giants with an eight to nothing lead. We are in the fourth. Fly ball, playable in center field. Glanville with the glasses down. Doug Waits puts it away. Two runs in the inning. Giants with three hits, no errors, and two left. They lead eight nothing. Three innings on this beautiful Sunday afternoon in South Philadelphia. Beautiful except for that. That's about to change this inning, pal. No. Yep. You're going to start that? What's going to happen in this inning? That perfect is going to be imperfect. And? That's all as far as I'm going to go right now. <laughs> Glanville will lead it off. He is flied out. He'll be followed by Jeffries and Roland. Nine up and nine down so far against Reeder. Reeder works really fast, and he has a lot of runs. One of the things hitters try to do against Reeder once in a while, step out against him to slow him down. You see, he keeps both feet on the rubber, gets the baseball, and back he comes with it. There's a lot of fastballs and curveballs, mixes in a changeup. Guy's just a winner. I mean, he's 50 and 26, started his major league career 10 and 0. That'll get you off to a good start. Out 
Outside, two and two to Glanville. Philly's looking for a base runner, trying to get any spark of offense. And Reeder does not come inside all that often, does there, three and two. Well, one thing you do with a guy that works this quick and likes to work that quick is you step out a lot on him, try and throw his rhythm off. And Glanville fouls it away. Not coming into the game batting at 314, having one of the National League's best seasons. Second in the league with 144 hits. Shallow left center field. Bonds coming on. Run off it by Ellis Burks. One out. Houston and Arizona will be here when the Phillies come back to town after this long road trip they had on tomorrow night. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with the Central Division leading Astros at 735. Then the Diamondbacks, a makeup doubleheader on the 20th. Home run hitting contest, dollar dog night at the Vet. And then Friday, August the 21st, 735 night game. 215 463 1000 stop by the Center City Ticket Office, Pennsylvania Convention Center at 12th and Arch Streets. Jeffries fly to right his first time up. He's a 400 lifetime hitter off reader with a couple homers coming into this one. Misses away. He has nothing really overpowering, but he can give hitters those comfortable overs. That's exactly what it is. It changes speeds well. There's a base hit. So the Phillies' first base runner is Greg Jeffries, not surprisingly, with those lifetime numbers that he has against Reader. That perfect is now imperfect. As you predicted. Well, he got behind him here. Jeffrey just sat on a fastball, gets it away, up a little bit, and just drills it up the middle, hits that ball hard, and no chance for Jeff Kent to get it. Scott Rowland, the batter, took a strike three call on a fastball away his first time up. 3.33 average here at Veterans Stadium this year for Rowland, best on the club. Misses away, 1-0. Reeder using all his pitches, throwing a changeup on that one. Also fastball, curveball. I'll tell you what's surprising is Scott Rowland being 0 for 6 off of this guy with four strikeouts. One of them today, one ball, one strike. Well, he's not. He's usually, you know, four or five strikeouts a game type pitcher. He's not a guy that's going to strike out a lot. But he does have good control and he changes speeds well. When he gave up two hits in nine innings his last time out, there you see where he is at 51 pitches. He struggled after the All-Star break. Now that pitch is outside. It's called a strike two and two. Home plate umpire Jeff Nelson. So he's just going to live out there when he gets that call. But this one's too far outside. Three and two. How much the Phillies can do as far as running and trying to make anything happen when you're down by this much time called by Roland and he gets it. And that's what I'm saying there is step out on him. Just get this guy. You, you got to take him out of his game plan somehow. If you're not going to do it by hitting him, try and throw him off, throw his timing off his rhythm, whatever you can do. Fly ball deep left center field. This is going to go. Scott Roland, a career high 22nd home run. Mom's happy about it. Phillies are on the board. It's eight to two when they were way behind last week against Florida on a Sunday afternoon. Scott Rowland got him going with a three-run homer. Chipping away, boys, chipping away. I knew it was right around the corner. <laughs> Tried to get you to say it before, and you wouldn't do it. I said that I didn't want to. I didn't want to go out and make any predictions other than that the perfection would be imperfection this inning. Yes, he was due against Reader. Yes, he was. He knows it's gone. Ball really carrying today, too. Nice catch by that fan out there in left center field. And that ball went way out of here into the seats. Oh, she sees it. She's waving it. She's blowing it out there. Keep going, baby. Bob, you're going to see a lot of that <laughs> before, before your little Scott has finished playing. <laughs> 22 of them for him this year. And he now has a total of 78 runs batted in. Well, unlike the three-run home run he hit last week, where he said, you know, I knew it was gone as soon as it went over the fence. Yeah. This one, he knew it was gone when he hit it. 
Kevin Jordan fouled out to the catcher Maine his first time up. Two balls and one strike on him. So a single by Jeffries, a homer by Scott Rowland, now 8-2 to two in favor of the Giants. And there's a base hit to right center field. That's going to be extra bases. It'll go to the wall. Bernard gets it back in, and Jordan with a stand-up double. Phillies with a single, homer and double as they try. Once again, you know, they are amazing. You and I both know maybe today's the day they're dead in the water offensively after getting behind, and now they come right back at them. All right, it's, just, it's a fastball, the same pitch as Jeffrey's got. KJ, if he gets a fastball around that plate, he's going to hit it hard somewhere, and he does there. Well, a triple would give him the cycle for this inning, which right. would be very nice. Talking about Bonds maybe getting the cycle. Bonds, Bonds needs a double. Phillies need a triple in this inning for the cycle. Triple would be beautiful. Knock in another run, get a run at a third one. Less than two outs. Mark Lewis, the batter, struck out his first time up. Outside, let's pause for station identification, the Phillies television network. You're watching Phillies Baseball on WPHL-TV Philadelphia. Lewis pop-up foul down the first baseline. Get out. Snow will not get there. It'll go out of play. Am I allowed to say get out of here? Sure, you can say anything you want. You'll find out when you say something you're not supposed to. <laughs> Trust me on that. Well, I, I, I don't. I hear people talking about, well, this guy's a homer, that guy's a homer. I'm a, I, I'm a homer. I want the Phillies to win. You want the Phillies to win, and the way you do a game, in my opinion, is is you give the opposition all the credit in the world, and you want your team to win. That's just the way I've always done a game. You can say whatever you want. Fly ball, center field. It's shallow. Burks, a long run, and Kent. And Jeff Kent makes a good play as Alex Burks wasn't going to get there. Pretty good play by the second baseman. Now, this ball was hit high. You see how far Ellis Burks has to go for it. He slows up when he sees Kent there. Kent obviously was calling for it at that point. Burks is used to being in Denver, and he's still playing pretty deep. And now he's going to play center field a candlestick, and that's a lot of laughs. Or three com. Maybe the hardest center field in baseball with the sun and the wind that you have to deal with out there. Well, it's not like the wind blows in or blows out. It'll go across one pitch. It'll be blowing in the next pitch. It'll be blowing out the next. You never know what it's going to do from pitch to pitch. You even feel it on the mound when you're throwing. Sometimes it's in your face. Sometimes it's at your back, and it affects your pitches. The ball's in one strike to Ruben Amaro playing in right field for the first time this year, at least as a starter. And he fouls that one off, protecting away. 0-2. He grounded the third his first time up. Kevin Jordan on at second with two outs, couple of runs in. There's Ken Ryan, who Terry Francona said he could use two days in a row and will have to today because of the early exit by Welch. The same guy that Terry Francona said, you know, you're going to have to be patient. <laughs> two days in a row right off the get-go. But he wants that. Well, they were going to use him two days in a row at Scranton and then bring him up here. And then they decided, well, they're short a pitcher right now. After Tyler Green went on the DL, why not bring him up here if he's got to pitch two days in a row? And Kenny Ryan says, he says I have no pain. I feel I feel nothing. He says, my arm feels great. And if he feels great, he's been here long enough. I mean, he knows what he's got to do. Tomorrow, top one towards short. Sanchez on the run. Throws and got it. Two runs, three hits, no errors, and one man. Left on base, 2-4, 8-2, two, two, San Francisco. The bottom of the order now, Ray Sanchez, the eight-hole hitter, then Kirk Reeder due to bat next, although Marvin Bernard is out there in the on-deck circle. He's the leadoff batter. And it is absolutely imperative that the bullpen shut the Giants down right now. Yeah, and you score, start scoring a lot, too, before you have to get to Mesa and then again, even though they got him last night, fouled away. Well, Reeder was... You know, cruising along, nobody's been on base for three innings, perfect for three innings. And when, when you're down eight runs, you go, man, this is going to be a tough one. But now you get two runs, and all of a sudden, the guy's like, you know what, we can score up this guy. It, it just, it, it, it lifts you up, you get a little confidence. But Terry Francona made a point of mentioning today, the, the way that 
they have battled the Giants the last couple nights. Unfortunately, they've had no margin for error in their bullpen because they had to fight back so much. Right. They're in the same situation again today. The bullpen can't give up anything. Yeah. And the, you know, the bullpen, although they, they gave up, uh, you know, the lead last night, and they not as sharp the last couple games, but they've done a great job. You know, they really have. And you, yeah. there, there's going to be times where a guy's going to give up a run or something, and, and it might be the game-winning run. But, you know, they've done a great job out there. Well, when you run three and four games, a guy's a night out of your bullpen, the odds are somebody's going to give up something. Right. Sanchez, a leadoff walk. And now Bernard or a reader will come out and attempt to sacrifice Colorado and San Diego two entertaining teams coming to the vet Saturday the 22nd at 705 Sunday the 23rd at 135 that's Bell Atlantic Mobile Scott Rowland t-shirt day that's a couple of weeks from today that will be the Rockies and then the Padres will be in on Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday the 25th 26th and 27th including a melon PSFS business person special Perez makes a great play and got him back to first safe. Boy. Whoa. But what a play by Yorkis Perez on that ball that was bunted hard right back to him. Well, he barehanded it and turned and threw a perfect strike to Alex Arias at second. And I'm not so sure that Reeder was safe at first. I think he might have, they might have gotten him there at first base. And Yorkis comes in, barehands, makes a perfect throw there. Alex steps off the bag and makes the throw. Boy. That was a nice play either way. Eric Gregg with a call at first base, and as you saw by several of those replays, that was very close. Whoa. Look at that ball behind him. Now, Bernard has been wearing him out this weekend. However, I that, think that might have been a reverse bow tie. That's what I mean. You know, I mean, you can't put your... You don't know what goes on out there, but this guy, uh, what is, is he, 7 for 12? Well, yeah, but it's a situation here where I, I really, uh, it's surprising that he would throw it behind him or, you know, put a guy, another guy in scoring position there when, you know, you're still six down, but. Might have gotten away. Bernard is one for two today, as you see, with a couple of runs scored. 7 for 12 in the series. And a ground ball to short. Arias, an easy play, throws him out. Reeder stays at second, two away. Now as Burks is already in the batter's box. Now he steps out as he's waiting for Bernard to head on back to the dugout. Burks hit a three-run home run. He's been hit by a pitch, and he's grounded out. And he takes it high and outside. One ball and no strikes. And no strikes with Barry Bonds on deck. There he is. And it's high, ball four. Here comes Barry Bonds. He has a single, a triple, and a home run. First and second. Two outs, and that pitch sails inside. He just gets out of the way. Ball one. Last time the Giants hit for the cycle was by Robbie Thompson against San Diego. We're checking right now to see if Bonds has ever hit for the cycle.
Robbie Thompson, what a good player he was for San Francisco, their second baseman for a lot of years. That was against us in San Diego. You saw that, huh? Yeah. Are you part of it? I saw that. Yeah, I saw it. You didn't contribute to it. I saw it. You did contribute to it, <laughs> didn't you? Greg Jeffries is it for the cycle for the Phillies. There's a base hit to right field. That won't be the cycle, but it's going to score another run. At least here comes Reeder chugging around, and he will score, and it's 9-2. to two. So Bonds gets another hit. He now has three runs batted in today, a total of 74. Runners at first and third and two outs. And Bonds has never hit for the cycle, but he's going to have a few more shots at it today. You got a breaking ball up a little bit there in the zone and just hit it right in the perfect spot between first and second. Ruben comes in, makes pretty good throws up the line a little bit though. And, and now Jeff Kent, the batter, he has singled, knocked in a run, homered, and grounded into a fielder's choice. He has a couple of RBIs. Both Bonds and Kent coming into this series or into this game had not hit much on the road trip for the Giants, but they're having big games today. All right, so what part of the cycle did you give up to Robbie Thompson? I don't remember. Actually, I don't know if I was a part of it. There goes Bonds running. Oh, boy, that's not a good idea when you have a 9-2 to lead, huh? Well, I mean, there's a couple of schools of thought on that. And that's I know a, what theirs is. One of the things, it's a fifth inning. You know, and the, the, the Phillies ball club, these guys, this offense keeps coming back. 19 stolen bases for him. And I don't think Barry Bonds really cares. No. Pop-up foul out of play down the right field line. Well, there's a little bit of testiness right now. I mean, you can sense it. Yeah, well, if, you know what? The, the first pitch that Yorkus Perez threw to Barry Bonds was up and in. You look at John Bukovic, Terry Francona. I know what he's thinking. Nups one to first. Kevin Jordan has it. He will step on the bag. That'll do it. Giants get one more run in the game on one hit and lead two. It's nine to two, San Francisco. One of them is here. One of them's not real popular with some people here right now. Here's Reader facing the bottom of the Phillies order. Mark Parent, Alex Arias, and then a pinch hitter for Yorkis Perez as Ken Ryan continues to throw. Nub to Charlie Hayes on a couple of hops. Throws him out, one away. That'll bring up Arias, who is starting his 17th game today at shortstop. He is grounded out to short. And John Zuber in the on-deck circle to bat for the pitcher Perez. Strike call to Alex. Arias coming into the game batting 271. There's Ryan who will be the third Phillies pitcher today. 0-2. Reader continuing to work very fast. Two balls and two strikes to Arias. There's one out, nobody on base. Giants with a 9-2 lead here in the fifth inning. Foul down the first baseline. Kirk Reeder's 27 years of age. He's 6'2", 207 pounder out of Centralia, Illinois. What? Alex beats a curveball foul into the Giants' dugout. Montreal took him in the 18th round back in June of 91. Here's your Pico Energy Power rankings. Mark McGuire with 45, Sammy Sosa 42, and then the American League, Junior with 41. 
fly ball and hit pretty well to left field. Bonds is going back. It's going to go. A home run, Alex Arias. Alex's first home run of the year, 9-3 to three in favor of the Giants. That ball is carrying today. It sure is. Alex got that ball up just enough to his last home run, June 7th of 1997. And he has 10 career home runs. Now. He gets this ball up about letter high. He got it up there, got on top of it, hit it up in the air, and it's, it is, as I said, it's carrying warm day here. John Zuber, the pinch hitter. Zuber got a pinch hit last night. He has three pinch hits and 15 plate appearances. And he fouls that off out of play. Phillies have now hit two homers in the game. The Giants have hit three. Five home runs in the ball game. We're in the fifth inning. As Andy mentioned, the ball is really carrying here at the vet this afternoon. Fouled off by Zuber 0-2. A new supply of baseballs on their way to Jeff Nelson, the home plate umpire. just below us and into the crowd. Nice crowd here this afternoon. It is a absolutely perfect day in the Philadelphia area. Game time temperature 82. Pretty commonplace in the great Northwest, Will, days like this in the summer. But the sun never came out out there. Strike three call on a fastball away. We don't get a lot of sun in the great that's, Northwest. That's what we tell everybody to keep them out of there. <laughs> he just gets this fastball. He's been throwing fastballs up, up, up. He just gets this one right on the corner, knee high, and outside throws John Zuber. Good pitch. That'll bring up Doug Glanville. He's flied out twice. Once to Bonds and left, the other to Ellis Burks in center field. Strike right call, outside corner, according to Nelson. Glenville fouls it away. Two innings, three hits, an earned run, two walks, and a strikeout for Yorkis Perez. His line complete as Zuber batted for him. And Ken Ryan will be coming on in the sixth inning. Here is Yorkis Perez, gave him two out of the pen. Glenville fouls it back off the screen. Him out. Second strikeout of the inning for Reeder. One run for the Phillies on Arias's home run. Nobody left on base. 9-3 Giants. We're through five. Karen Tangura from Newtown, Pennsylvania. The only two players to hit 40-plus homers, 40-plus steals in the same season they are. I'll give you a clue. One guy's here, one guy's in the Metrodome. Barry Bonds. Yes. And Jose. And Seiko. That is correct. Nice going, Andy. Excellent. Both had 42 and 40 in the same season. Ken Ryan, the new pitcher for the Phillies, as you look at Barry Bonds, who had those 42 homers, 40 stolen bases, 9-3 Giants. Our Mike Dardis is with Phil's general manager, Ed Wade. Sharing the booth right now, uh, Mr. Wade with greatness, with Wheels and Andy here to our left. Got a chance to step into the press box with him. Got a chance to talk with you a little bit in the pregame show, but for the viewers who didn't get a chance to see that, we wanted to talk to you again. Trade deadline has come and gone, of course, Friday at midnight. A lot of talk that you might have, uh, you know, dealt away one of the veterans, a lighter of Portugal, a Jeffries, etc. How close did you come to making a deal, and, and why did you decide uh, to not go ahead with a deal? Was it the other teams that, that basically backed out? Well, I think we came 
I think we came pretty close to making a deal that didn't involve the veteran players that have been talked about so much. We had we made some I, what I termed aggressive proposals to some clubs. One particularly on Thursday that uh, if the other team had said yes, I think it would have strengthened us at a position both for now and for the future. And and uh, as it turned out, we didn't hear back from that club. But we had those types of conversations over a week to ten day span. That if uh, if we had gotten positive responses from some teams, we would have had a chance to to. Uh, to improve and fit the direction that we're trying to go. Just wanted to get your thoughts on something real quick. Uh, if you buy the theory that uh, Bobby Estelle of the two catchers has the, the better upside, so to speak, if you do buy that theory, as a general manager, what do you do? Do you, do you trade a guy with a better upside who's going to get you more, or do you keep a guy with a better upside who's going to help you out? I mean, that's some, some of the stuff that you've got to think about, I would assume. Well, you know, regarding our catching situation, I, I think it's uh, I think we're in sort of an enviable position because we've got two solid young frontline catchers, in our opinion. And, and if at some point we, we make a determination that, that it's appropriate to move one of them, uh, we'll spend a lot of time talking about exactly which, which way to go because that, that's a... That's a move that we can't afford to make a mistake on. Uh, obviously, once the season ends and we have a chance to sit down and, and as objectively as we can assess where we are and what our needs are, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll then have to try to figure out how to move forward and fill those needs. So you know, we've got a lot of ground to cover. We've got a third of the season left to play here, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to see us play as well as we have the first two-thirds of the season, and, and then we'll make those decisions once, uh, once it's all said and done. Ed Way, thanks a lot for your time. General Manager Ed Way, back upstairs, or actually right over next to me, guys. <laughs> All right, Mike, we'll grab it from me. Thanks to Ed Wade and to you for that interview. A base hit there by Snow as he was jammed by Ken Ryan and fought it off into right field for his second hit of the ball game, and that'll bring up Charlie Hayes. No, he makes a good pitch to him. He gets it in on his fists, and he just muscles it, you know, in the right field over Lewis's head at second and short of Morrow and right. Charlie Hayes is flying out, grounded out, and struck out. He's the only member of the starting lineup who has not been on base as of yet. Giants with nine runs, 12 hits. Phillies three runs, four hits. No errors in the game for either ball club. the ball slicing right back to him. Ruben makes the play for the first out. And Brent Maine, the catcher, will bat a strikeout. He's doubled and flied out. One for three, batting at 286. Maine starting his 44th game behind the plate. Doug Mirabelli now the backup catcher. Brian Johnson, who's caught caught quite a bit for the Giants on the disabled list. Phillies are not holding J.T. Snow on at first base, figuring with a six-run lead, he's not going to run. We mentioned last inning, Bonds ran, and I, I think they were real happy about that. In this case, they just play back. does not go two balls and no strikes it's almost uh, when you hold them on in a situation like it's almost like you're inviting them to run now you play behind them you're saying hey you know we're con not conceding the game we're conceding this this base here in a sense and we don't think it's right that you run here I mean it's basically what you're saying by playing behind you Three balls and no strikes now on Maine with Ray Sanchez, the shortstop, on deck, and then the pitcher reader due to bat. Kenny Ryan making his second appearance. He was in the game for one inning last night. Had rehab appearances at both Clearwater and Scranton Wilkesbury. And he gets that one over for a strike, three and one. Reconstructive elbow surgery last year. And as Larry Anderson mentioned last night, Kenny Ryan back a lot faster than you would think. Here that Randy Johnson now has an ERA in the National League. Has an ERA. It's one to one now in the bottom of the seventh, Houston to Pittsburgh. 
It's not a high ERA. No. Nor will it probably ever be. Nor would you expect it to be. There's the base runner, Snow. Three balls, two strikes, one out. See if he goes now. He does. And the ball's grounded in the hole. A base hit. He'll head on over to third. And once again, the San Francisco Giants are in business with runners at first and third and one away. Well, as you were saying earlier, you know, Kenny Ryan has not pitched back-to-back -back days, and it's, get, it's probably taken him a little bit to, you know, get the, the feeling, get the, I don't know, the juices flowing in back-to-back -back games like, like he did before the surgery. Here's Sanchez. He doubled high off the wall in left field, scored a run in the second, struck out and walked. Kirk Reeder due to bat next. Take a look in at the Phillies' dugout. Runners at the corners and one away. There's a looper into right. That'll drop for a hit. Tenth run of the game will score. And it's now 10 to 3 as Sanchez picks up a run batted in. And JT Snow scores a run, stopping at second as the catcher Maine. Now these guys have hit some balls hard. They've hit some balls soft. Kenny Ryan makes a pretty good pitch there. Down, outer half. They just Sanchez just drops it into right field. Greener the batter, 0 for 3, tried to sacrifice his last time up, bunted it right back to Yorkies Perez. He does have eight sacks on the year. And he does not. But this time, what a catch some guy just made down the third baseline. A screaming liner reached up with his glove and saved problems for a lot of people around him. And as that glove went up, the head went down. Oof. And the ball went in it. That was some catch. There he wow. is. Got his Mariners hat. Must be from Seattle. Checking on the big unit up there to see how he's pitching at Pittsburgh today. Where it's what? Where this is a normal day in Seattle, right? Yeah, this. Yeah, in the Great Northwest, Will. Picture perfect day. First and second, one away. High with a fastball to Reader. One ball and one strike. another indication that the Giants you know they don't sacrifice here they already have a seven run lead so at this point they're letting Reader swing away and he nubs one to Ken Ryan this will work like a sacrifice he moves both runners over he's out at first two outs over to third goes Maine into second Sanchez that's essentially it is I mean he gets a sacrifice basically out of it and that's you know, everything's going right for the Giants the three hits off of Kenny Ryan, a, a jam shot, a CNI ground ball, and a ball up into the bat that's looped into right. It's a run, and and this swing and bunt. That'll bring up Marvin Bernard. He scored a couple runs today. He's one for three. That a fourth inning double. The curveball for a strike. Jammed him there and he fouls it off and ahead of Bernard 0 and 2. Bernard is the type of guy who looks like if you come inside, you've got to get that ball in. If you leave it out over the plate a little bit, he can almost it looks like he fights it off, but he's really just having an in, inside out swing and he gets the bat hit on it, hits it hard the other way. If they're coming in there again, he misses outside. Mark Parent was set up inside. Ryan throws a fastball away, one and two. make it two more are going to score Bernard will get second base because a fan grabbed it so it's 12 to 3 now on a ground rule double by Marvin Bernard who was not going to go to second until the fan grabbed the baseball well the fan grabbed it and then he looked around and threw it back out on the field 
I think he realized all of a sudden it was a fair ball. Okay, Jay tries to come up with this. It's not an easy play. It was hit pretty hard, and ball came up on him. Now this fan reaches down, picks it up. I think somebody said, hey, that's a fair ball, and he threw it right back out. And the guy's being let out of his seat. So Bernard has a couple of doubles. Giants have three more. And have a nine-run lead now at 12 to 3 as they're having a big offensive afternoon. Ellis Burks pitches inside, one and one. So the afternoon has a three run home run. He hit it into the fourth level. He's had two upper deck home runs here at Veterans Stadium. One off Mike Grace. And he almost had another one here today as he put that one in the fourth level. Fouls that back. On deck is Bonds, who's had a tremendous game. Four for four. Two singles, a triple, and a homer. And a stolen base. The other home run by Ellis Burke to the upper deck was hit off Ben Rivera. There's a smash, but it's right at Arias. That'll do it, but three more on the board for the Giants. They do it with four hits, no errors, and leave one. 12-3 San Francisco. They put it away when they went back to back to back in the second inning. Ellis Burks, Barry Bonds, and Jeff Kent. Breeder's been strong through six. No walks and five strikeouts. Phillies have a couple of homers off him. Marvin Bernard is out of this ball game, but not before he finished off another two-hit game where he now is eight for 14. Double switch for the Phillies. Scott Rowland hardly ever gets any time off. He's gone. Kevin Sessick at third. Ricky Vitalico, the new pitcher. Switch him in the order for play-by-play. -play. Here's Harry. All right, Paggy Wills. There's Vitalico's numbers. A win, two losses, three saves, 3 eight, six ERA in 18 games. Facing Barry Bonds to leave it off. Get him. Now Bonds charging the mound. Vitalico is ready for him. And both benches are emptying. And that's the result of a stolen base. That is a result of a stolen base. You can almost feel that coming. When I came over here, I asked Wheels, is he going to hit him? And Wheels says, I don't know. And I didn't know for sure either, but, uh, you know, that was inevitable. as a big gang at the mound now, and that was because of the stolen base. All I can tell you is, Harry, when that stolen base occurred, uh, I mentioned it's getting a little pesky around here. So, no, I'm not surprised. And you hope Bond stole the base hurt. with a score 9-2, to two, and that really really incensed the Phillies of Batalico hit him with the first pitch he delivered and anybody's going to come out of the bullpen and do that it would be Ricky B. Oh yeah. <laughs> well everybody was kind of ready for that. Just in case you never know. You don't do what Bonds did and, and uh, you know it did upset people a little bit I think. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. That's what you worry about in these things. And now it's calming down as long as someone else doesn't start chirping. You know, usually that's what happens. They break up fairly fast unless somebody else starts saying something. And the umpires are doing a good job of getting this over with. But unfortunately, the Phillies are probably going to need another pitcher right away. Yeah, I'm... I didn't see them eject Vitalico, but they might have. And now Eric Gregg and Mark Hirschbeck are huddling in front of the mound. Well, Bonds has to go because he charged the mound, and he might be looking at a suspension, too, for doing that. 
Jones is definitely gone. I don't know about the Calico. The umpires are huddling right now to decide. Bonds had been four for four with a triple, a homer, and two singles prior to that at bat. Again, he never hit for the cycle, and he won't now. Greg is talking to Dusty Baker. Yeah, Ricky Vitalik was gone. Will go. yeah. He's gone. And here comes Mark Terry Bruce Francona Becker. out to see what exactly is happening. And so Terry will have to get another pitcher up and bring in another pitcher. Vitalik will pitch. Pitches the one man, bombs, and hits him. Thrills him. Well, here it is. It was. It was you no know, doubt he, about it. He hits him low, too. You know, I mean, it hits him right on the leg. I mean, come on. And he charges the mound. And Ricky Batalico sees Barry Bonds coming. And look out. Just ducks and tackles him. And the pile up. There, right there. That had to get a little heavy. John Vukovic got out of the dugout in a hurry. He was right there. I think you're probably surprised to see that happen. Yeah. If Irish Mike Ryan were still coaching, he would have been in with the bullpen from the bullpen <laughs> in a hurry. Jeff Kent was in there fast for the Giants to try and help his teammate. He was the on deck batter. There's Metallico out of the game. And they're still trying to sort it all out here. Dusty Baker. Jerry Spradlin is getting up in the bullpen along with Wayne Gomes. And the Phillies have had to go to the pen early, had to go to the pen in the fourth inning. all as a result of a stolen base that Bonds in the fifth inning stole second base. Nine to two. With a score nine to two. You don't do that. And that's why that happened. I mean, the four hits fine. He's going to get his hits. There's going to be no retaliation. But when you're burying a team on the scoreboard and you steal a base, you just doesn't play in some circles and certainly not in Vitalico's circle. Uh -oh. Bonds, Bonds. Are... Well, he's having a little trouble with somebody in the Phillies dugout. And I have a pretty good idea who it might be. And we'll just leave it at that. Probably Jeff Cooper, I guess. Huh? I doubt it. <laughs> if it were Coop, you couldn't hear him. Coop doesn't yell that loud. Now, Eric Gregg's still talking to the home plate umpire, Jeff Nelson. What they have to do is make sure they write everything down, probably on the back of a lineup card out there, so they can file a report later. Make, see him writing everything down there, the home plate umpire, and that's what Eric and he were talking about there, uh, you know, what they want to make sure they file to the league president. And there's the umpire writing down what they feel happened in that incident. And Wayne Gomes is taking his warm-up tosses for the Bills. We'll get a pinch runner for Barry Bonds, who has been ejected from this game. 12-3, Giants lead. We are in the seventh inning. Bench-clearing incident after Batalico hits Barry Bonds. Gomes leads all National League relievers with wins. He's won nine of them, lost three. 3-5-2 ERA, 69 innings, 63 hits, 27 runs. Great strikeout-walk ratio, 69 strikeouts and 16 walks. And Sean Dunstan will come in to pinch run for Barry Bonds. So Dunstan at first base, nobody out here in the seventh. The banner will be Jeff Kent. Kent has singled homered, hit into a fielder's choice, and grounded out. 
Obviously, both benches will be warned after something like that, and that should be the end of it. Yeah, the next pitch that plate umpire Jeff Nelson feels was intentionally thrown close or at a hitter and an automatic ejection for pitcher and manager. to three. It's been all Giants here this afternoon. A ball of no strikes to Jeff Kent. Lines a foul down the left field side. One and one. John Dunstan, the pinch runner, they got him from Cleveland along with Alvin Borman and Jose Mesa. Yeah, and Sean Dunstan played a lot for them last year, so the Giants, with a chance of getting back uh, and trying to win the wild card, decided he could help them again. Missing down and in, two and one to count to Kent. We saw Dunstan in spring training this year trying to play second for Cleveland. And, you know, he's been a shortstop his whole career, and you could see that was going to be tough for him. Pop up on the right side of the infield. Kevin Jordan waits. One down here in the seventh inning. One thing you can't help but notice is Sean Dunstan is not being held off first base. He's not thinking about running. <laughs> JT Snow will be the batter. Snow is two for three with a walk. Giants have banged out 15 hits here this afternoon. Just foul. One strike to J.T. Snow. Now Houston finally scored for the big unit. Pittsburgh had taken a 2-1 lead on Houston and Randy Johnson, but Houston just got four in the eighth and jumped to a 5-2 lead. Have any strikeout totals or anything on them? I didn't see any strikeouts. That uh, young third baseman homered off him, Aramis Ramirez. Well, you figured it would be a right-handed hitter. Bouncing it up there, one ball and one strike. McFerrin he caught that double header a week ago Friday when Mike Lieberthal was put on the disabled list. Actually played a double header today. He pitched in the father children's game. <laughs> and he had to, and to go chase down Bonds at the mound, so he's had a long day as Mark Farron. Took a nasty foul tip off his shoulder early in this one, too. They don't have any strikeout totals on the unit, but the Rocket has struck out 10 through six innings in Minnesota. Roger Clements having another great year. Going for his 14th win. Well hit to deep right field, and this ball is out of here. Home run, J.T. Snow. His... 13th home run of the year, and it's now 14 to 3, San Francisco. He stood there and watched that a long time, and then flipped his bat back onto the playing field. Which, you know, that's not a good idea either. And after what just happened, I, I don't know. Now, for a pitcher like Gomes, when you're way behind the game, he's usually in tight games. It's you no, know, it's really hard to keep your concentrated powers. It was snow watching the home run. Yeah. I mean, he watched it a long time, and then as he went down the line, he put that bat in the fair part of the playing field. It's now 14 to 3 Giants breaking ball just missed. One ball and one strike to Charlie Hayes, who is 0 for 4. a foul down the third base side. One ball and two strikes to Hayes. Two 
balls and two strikes to Charlie Hayes. One out, two runs in. Giants on top, 14 to three. Got him with a curveball. It's two down, and that'll bring up Brent Maine. Maine has struck out, doubled, flied out, and singled. to Brent Maine. Bouncing ball, it's fair. Jordan has it. Two Gomes covering, and that will retire the side. Giants put two more on the board on a two-run homer by Snow. One hit, no errors, none left. Stretch time, we go to the bottom of the seventh, 14-3 San Francisco. Bottom of the seventh, it's 14-3 San Francisco. Ray Sanchez has moved from short to second. Rich Aurelia comes into play shortstop. Jeff Kent out of the ballgame. Dunstan's playing center. John Dunstan Not stays that. in the game to play center field. Stan Javier now playing left field, and Ellis Burks moves to right. Phillies bullpen now as Ruben Amaro leads off for the Phillies in the bottom of the seventh. Amaro has been up twice, twice he's grounded out. Two balls and no strikes to Ruben Amaro. Miles it back and out of play. and a strike to Ruben. Two and two. Kirk Reeder. Well on his way to his 12th win. He's the winningest pitcher for the Giants this year. Full count now to Amaro. In the air to left field, Stan Javier. Puts it away, one down. Mike Dardis is standing by now with uh, Nina Jordan, wife of Bill's first baseman, second baseman Kevin. Hey, thanks a lot, Harry. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's family day, so we do have Nina and seven-and-a-half-month-old Kevin Jordan Jr., KJJ. Uh, first of all, big clutch game-tying home run last night for Kevin. He's a little superstitious, like a lot of baseball players are. Tell us what he did to change his luck last night before the homer. Okay, he just um, changed his bats, and he has a necklace that he considers to be like his good luck chain, and we changed the leather on that, and... Um, he hit a home run the next day, so that might have had something to do with it. We don't know. Do you have any necklaces for me that I could try on? I could make you one. This is a special one that I made for him especially, and he's worn it ever since we met. So. Now, I know your folks uh, live in Australia, and you, you live there in the off-season. Uh, so I'm wondering, how did you guys meet? I guess you met back in 1992 in Australia? Yes. Uh, he had a friend who was meeting up with a friend of mine who was working in the same shop. And... Um, they were in the shop, and I just happened to walk in at the same time, and that's how we met. And it just so happened that Kevin and I ended up with a romance, but not them. Well, thanks a lot, and good luck to you with uh, KJJ here. Yeah, thank you very much. Guys, she's extremely shy, and she was worried about this interview, but she did a great job. Back to you. Yes, she did. Thank you very much, Nina, and thank you, Mike Dardis. That's two down on a ground out by Mark Parra before... 
before he grounded out, he cued a foul ball off the end of his bat that hit Philly Fanatic, who was standing on top of the Phillies dugout. Fanatic has brought that chair for protection. <laughs> Things just haven't gone well here this afternoon. <laughs> Alex Arias. Oh, what is oh. this? I mean, what's he? Why would he hit Arias? It makes no sense, you know? Uh-oh, here we go again. Oh, we're going to go again as right. Oh, my. You know, that's just okay. You know, Reader's got everything going right now. Oh, well. Now the managers go. Reader goes. Another delay. John Vukovic with J.T. Snow. <laughs> Alex Arias was almost incredulous about that. Like, yeah, what is this for? Two outs, nobody on base. He's just telling Alfonso to get his hands off. Well, that's what that was. Look at Alex. He's about as mild-mannered a guy yeah, as you could ever be around. He's upset. Mark Parrott has been... One of the real peacemakers in both of these breakers. Is and as big as he is, people listen to him, certainly. There's other guys you'd rather tangle with, I would think. go back to the benches now after a second bench clearing incident here in this ball game. I would expect Reeder would have to be thrown sure, out. They got to go. I mean, that's a, they give warnings after the first one. I mean, that's a, it's elementary. Now they got to get a pitcher and give them all the time that's needed to warm up. There's Eric Gregg and the umpires talking it over out in front of home plate. Reeder's still standing around. Of course, they have to deem that was intentional. Well, that's a no-brainer. Arias uh, will have to be kicked out. Here it is. There it is. I mean, he threw it right at him. Yeah, that's very obvious. He's had too good a control. Hadn't walked the batter all day. Well, he aimed it right at him. And Eric Gregg is trying to haul Dusty Baker, who's very upset. And Eric Gregg is walking Dusty Baker back toward the dugout. Terry Francona. Francona, maybe they haven't kicked out Reeder. That's amazing. Maybe they have not kicked out Kirk Reeder. He's still out there. Well, you figure they'd given warnings automatically after that first incident, so that one there would get him kicked out. But we'll see. satisfied with whatever Mark Hirschbeck told him, and he heads back to the dugout. Well, maybe now they're giving the warnings. <laughs> Normally, that just happens after you have one of those. Yeah. Well, Reader's still out there. Fans are unhappy about that. Chilling doesn't agree with that decision. <laughs> How could you tell? <laughs> well, you lip reader? Well, yeah. That was one of the times he did not put his glove over his face when he said something. Good time to keep the mics off near the dugouts. <laughs> now, Eric's over explaining it to Terry Francona, who you see Dusty Baker looking at. Now, he's telling him, he's not, I guess he just said he's not throwing him out, and he saw Tito go wide has not been pretty here this afternoon. 14 to 3 San Francisco. It's a great day for the family picnic after this game. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good... Giants, Giants will be invited to that family yeah. picnic. A lot of good feelings down there right now. These two teams still have to meet again tomorrow afternoon. They do. Jerry's upset that Reader is allowed to stay in this game. Can understand why. I don't think that ball has slipped. No, he threw it right at him. 
sometimes, you know. You had, walk, you had him walk the batter. Now, sometimes, you know, you're reading minds when you see this stuff. But that one, I mean, he just aimed it right at his hip. Jeff Kellogg's going to have a full card. He's down there riding on it again. I mean, Jeff uh, Nelson. Desi Relaford will come on to pinch run for the ejected Alex Arias. And he'll probably stay in the game and play short. And Kevin Sefcik will be the batter. Now we are ready to resume play for the time being. We're in the bottom of the seventh. It is 14 to 3. Sefcik batting for the first time, hitting a 267. One ball and no strikes. Fly ball poked into right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Relifer goes to third, and the Phillies have runners at first and third. Get two down here in the seventh. And it'll bring up Doug Glanville, who is 0 for 3. This will play Javier, and it's now 15 to 3, San Francisco. And Burks gets an RBI single, and Sean Dunstan will bat for the first time. Philly's playing Burks to pull, and he hits his ball through the middle. Fastball that ran back over the middle of the plate. Uh, Relifer can't get there. Joe Carter knows that should have been his run. Javier talking about. John Dunstan bats for the first time. He came in to pinch run for the ejected Barry Bonds. One and nothing to Dunstan. Johnson's coming over to the Giants. Two hits and seven at bats. him up toward third base. Kevin Sepsik puts it away. That will retire the side. Giants add another run. Two hits, no errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. 15-3 San Francisco. The bottom of the ninth, he has struck out, popped up, and lined out to right. Chris Brock working in his second inning in relief of Kirk Reeder. And Lewis lost a high fly ball into shallow right field. Put away by Ellis Burks. One down here in the ninth inning, and we'll bring up Ruben tomorrow, who is 0 for 3. Brock's retired all four that he has faced. He's hit a couple of home runs today. Scott Rowland, who is no longer in the game, homered in the fourth, and Alex Arias hitting a home run also, his first of the year for the Phils. But the Giants have been in charge all the way. And a 6-0 lead after two innings. Tomorrow's first opportunity to bat left-handed here. Colorado has 
jumped in front of Chicago now six to three at Wrigley Field. Oh, the Giants like that score. Failing the Cubs in the wild card by three and a half coming into play today. Two balls and a strike to Ruben Amaro. Pops it up near second base, fielded by Aurelian. Two down, it'll bring on Mark Perrin. Parrott has popped up and twice grounded out. Follows this one down the first base side. One strike, Mark Perrin. strikes to Mark Parent. Business person special tomorrow, Carlton Lower will try to salvage one in this series. The rookie will be opposed by veteran Danny Darwin as Parent singles the center field. And that means Desi Relliford will get in the bat. Relliford came in a pinch run for Alex Arias when he was ejected from the game. Here's a base hit for Mark Parent. Not a whole lot to do in this game right now. The guys just get up there, swing the bat. I think everybody wants this one to end and just move on till tomorrow because it got a little testy here this afternoon. Relliford batting at 272. Rounds of foul. Two bench clearing incidents. Today. Foul out of play. No balls and two strikes to Desi Relliford. Afternoon for Terry Francona. Tough loss last night. That one was hard to sleep on. It's going to drop in right center. No, it's not. What a great catch by Ellis Burks to end the ball game. Uh, Ellis Burks made a great catch to end this ball game for the Phillies in the ninth. No runs, one hit. No errors and one left. This one's mercifully over. Shows you thanks something. Thanks to a great effort by Burke. Shows something to your new teammates, huh? When you make that kind of play, shows really? you're here to play and help. When you've got a 12-run lead, outstanding play by Burks as San Francisco wins it by a score of 15-3. to Including back-to-back-to-back -back -back home runs in the second inning by Burks, by Barry Bonds, and by Jeff Kent. So a 15 to 3 final here, San Francisco, and we'll be back with the totals and a recap right after these.